It's Wednesday and you're watching Freight Waves Now. I'm your host Anthony Smith and coming up we're going to have Luke Flaska talking to the brokers. We also have Andrew Cox with the shipper update, but first we're going to go to Zach Strickland with the carry update brought to you by Powerfleet. Stay tuned. Hey everyone and welcome to your carrier update presented by Power Fleet. I'm Zach Strickland and we are right smack dab in the middle of the doldrums of winter. So that means that not a lot of action on the spot market is not going to help you out if you're out there trying to keep your truck moving across the road in the middle of the winter. So. Let's see what volumes are doing. We do have some signs of hope, however, that things are gonna get a little bit better, at least for the short term. One, one day does not make a trend, but the, if you look behind me, you see the tender volume index here shooting up to a 96.82. Uh, that's a pretty strong bounce uh, off of what was kind of a declining moment there. If you look last year, we had a similar uh, pattern last year. You know, you have kind of that offset with the weeks, uh, but you see this kind of long little bump here and then it drops back down. We're operating about three to 4% higher than this time last year. So that's a pretty good sign in general, but again, one day does not a trend make. Let's check out and see where exactly these volumes are coming from and where they're arising from. So we've got Atlanta market, the biggest market in the country right now, sitting at about 4.4% uh, down uh, week over week. This is the weekly change in tender volumes. Ontario, California, however, 6.4% up. Now the Southern California markets have been uh, weakening uh, over the last three to four months. You know, you had all that trade, that tariff pull forward. It's really starting to diminish. You don't have a lot of that activity on the ports like we used to, but this is a decent sign right here that Ontario is starting to come back just a little bit uh, week over week. Uh, Dallas, Texas, actually. I'm going to show you that one here in a minute, but that one has a longer running trend line, looks a little bit stronger. Juliet, Illinois, uh, even showing up this week with a 3.6% increase. So some of the bigger markets are driving this uh, increase day over day, uh, for instance, but looking here at the uh, Ontario, California market, which I was talking about, this is the second biggest market in the United States. We have volumes coming up here. If you look down here, you can see that we do have a good, nice little signal uh, of an increasing volume coming out of that area year over year or week over week, looking strong year over year. However, we're still uh, way down. If you look all the way back up here, from this time last year, we're way down in terms of volume year over year. Uh, but week over week, we do have a little bit of a pickup, but we do feel this is a little bit nor more normal. Uh, the tender rejection index right here on the orange line, still pretty far down. That actually is up year over year. Uh, if you look way back here, it's at about 3.04%. Uh, we were right under 2.5% this time last year. So tender rejection rates are higher. Now 3.04 3.04 versus 2.5, not a big increase. Not You're not going to see a significant amount of spot market activity versus this time last year. But again, it is interesting to see that volumes are so far down where uh, tender rejection rates are actually a little bit up. I find that really fascinating. But again, watch the Ontario market here for any future increases. Dallas. This is the Dallas, Texas chart. So looking at volumes coming out of Dallas, we're seeing a lot longer trend line here of increasing volume since about early November. Now we had Christmas peak season, uh, a lot of activity around that, and now we're starting to see this really pick back up. Now the difference here is Dallas this time last year was much, much lower in terms of outbound volume. Uh, and we are starting to trend that back up a little bit before season. Dallas, Texas, uh, the Texas markets tend to see a lot more activity in the summer, the warmer months as all the beverage consumption starts to pick up. So the Dallas market, again, tender rejection rates way down. You're not gonna expect any spot market activity help, but your contracted volumes for those carriers that do operate out of this area should see a pretty strong uh, signal this time, uh, you know, especially in these colder months. Overall country, looking at the weighted rejection index, not a lot of change day over day. Weather systems, not really a factor right now. Check out the Minneapolis market, Savannah, Harrisburg, if you're looking for spot market activity increases. And that'll do it for today's carrier update. The comprehensive logistics offerings from PowerFleet cover in-cab ELD, fleet management, trailer tracking, cargo monitoring, and tracking other assets such as chassis and intermodal containers. Power up your operations with PowerFleet.
Hi everyone, good morning. I'm Luke and I'm bringing you another broker update. So if you remember from Monday, we took a look at tender lead time. Not a data set we look at often, but very, very powerful. And we're gonna stay on topic with that here for a little bit. So this chart behind me here, in blue, you've got the outbound tender rejection index here in the United States sitting at just over 5.5% as of yesterday. So not bad, still pretty low or remaining level. I imagine this is probably where the bottom is going to be, at least for the foreseeable future. It may change at some point, but for the most part, it looks like we're just going to stay flat until things pick up. Uh, the orange line here is tender lead time. So that's over here on my right. And we're sitting at... Uh, uh, about 2.66 days. So that's how much notice shippers are going to give you on average in order to get their your freight moved or, or excuse me, covered. Um, so you saw a slight little downtick yesterday. Again, for the most part, very flat. Follows uh, or leads rejections, I should say, very, very well. Um, chart here behind me in this map, this right here, uh, we're going to come back to uh, lead time, but this is your call map for today. So if you're looking for areas to target for sales calls or just make some smarter decisions, uh, you have the outbound tender rejection weekly change. So in blue, you have an increase. So you're looking in some of these darker blue markets here in Colorado or up there in Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota region, you're looking in that five to six, seven percent weekly gain in tender rejection. So that's a good sign. That means that shippers are going to have a little bit harder time covering their contracted freight, potentially applying a little upward pressure on pricing. Good opportunity to call, potentially be the hero, go cover some freight, land a new customer. In these red markets, they're going to be softening. So shippers are going to have an easier time covering your freight. So what I would do if you're moving freight in any of these red markets, especially there down in uh, the Mississippi, Alabama region or here in the middle of the country there in South Dakota or in the Pacific Northwest, great opportunity to lower carrier rates and potentially push those down to create margins. Uh, that'll do it for your call map for today. And then here, we're going to dive into the Oklahoma City market. So we're looking at tender lead time here overlaid with uh, rejections, particularly dry van rejections. So in blue, you've got your outbound tender dry van rejections sitting at right about a little over almost six and a quarter percent right now. And saw a massive spike really since the 14th. So it's really just gone on a pretty steady incline here over the last three or four days. Now this green line here is the tender lead time. So we shot up from a little under 2.4 days to over three days overnight. That should spark your interest immediately. That means that shippers um, are experiencing something. They're experiencing some tightness. Great opportunity. I'd focus on Oklahoma City today if you don't have freight there. Really pound the phones there. You might have some opportunities to land another customer. Or if you are moving freight there, keep an eye. Shippers are experiencing tightness and they're a little nervous. Otherwise, they would not expand their lead time by that much that quickly. So. Keep an eye on that. You might be able to increase your spot market pricing to shippers. You may also pay a little bit of a premium to carriers today as they're also rejecting freight at a higher rate. So do keep that in mind. Now, one last thing we're going to do, we're going to dive in here a little bit more to Oklahoma City market. So uh, if you look here on the top right of your screen, you've got the lanes, some of the bigger lanes going out of Oklahoma City, like to Dallas and forth. Oklahoma City to Bloomington, Indiana has the highest tender rejections right now at almost 10 and percent that lane. Remember the national average was sitting at just above 6%. So it's a good bit higher. Um, and you can see here on the bottom right of your screen, this is the chart of Oklahoma City to Bloomington tender rejections. So we're sitting again about 10 and percent. Massive spike there on the 14th, right? So that's when the rejection started to rise. The tender lead time really spiked up. So something interesting is going on there. Now, as far as to see if that'll continue, you can see it's leveled off the last day or two. We'll look at our forecasting pricing model here. Uh, we're sitting at about $1.36, but it looks like there's going to be upward pressure over the next couple of days. So do keep that in mind. And I'm Luke, and that'll do it for today's broker update. Voices from every corner of the supply chain concerning all modes of transportation. From the world's largest logistics podcast network, this is what the freight tech revolution sounds like. Freightcast presented by Freightways. Subscribe now wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Shipper Update. I'm here with Andrew Cox. Andrew, what do you have for us today? Tony, 
talking housing starts and permits, the data came out this morning. Uh, another really good month, even though it slid a little bit. Uh, if we talk, look at the actual values here on the top, uh, and then we look at the monthly change. So we're down 3.6% on housing starts. This is much uh, better than expectations. Expectations were that things were going to fall in the double digit range, somewhere above uh, 10 or 11%, but only fell 3.5%. And that is really good uh, for the housing uh, market so far this year. And then we look at permits, which is kind of a forward looking, you know, 90 day out, uh, outlook. And that actually jumped uh, to, I think, uh, to a 13 year high for right. highest since uh, March 2007 uh, and up almost 10% year over year. Right, and so one of the things that you mentioned is that it was expected to drop because I think last month's results for housing starts was a really a strong surge, right, near 12, 13 year high for starts. So a decline of only 3.6% is pretty impressive. Yeah, it's formidable, really. Uh, in December, we again, you're right, we had really ha we had warm weather. We had incredible, especially across the southeast, uh, a lot of housing starts and permits there in the southeast. And then, yeah, only falling 3% is really impressive. It gives me uh, it gives me confidence moving forward through 2020 that even when business investment has been a little bit weak and com consumer spending may eventually kind of churn out of the market moving forward, housing may keep us going in this long bull run. Right, and, and I think one of the other areas that we're going to have to watch closely is that these numbers can get uh, revised quite often. So when the next no next month's numbers come out, we're going to be watching closely to see what that change really was. But a bit of a difference, right, between single family and multifamily. Single family makes up the larger majority of it. Correct. Multifamily a little bit smaller, but a lot more volatile. I think multifamily performed pretty well this this latest month. Yeah, it was up slightly. I think single family was down. Uh, it was down more than uh, than multifamily, obviously. Right. Uh, but and it does make up the biggest portion. But again, it's. Uh, really below expectations, above expectations on the fall. And we look at this yearly change. We, we talked about the, the beginning of 2019. There was a reason that Fed cut rates three times in 2019. They wanted to kind of boost that housing economy again. And it seems that they've been successful. Uh, year over year change up 20% on starts and nearly 20% on permits. So what the Fed has done has worked to, to kind of inspire a little bit more growth moving forward. And the home builders sentiment, uh, they did another survey last week and home builders confidence seems high, right. um, it, relatively high. They only have two complaints and this is continued complaints about uh, lack of lack of good uh, lots to build on and a lack of uh, labor. Right, right. And I love hearing about sentiment, both on the consumer side and the builder side. Um, one of the areas that we're really going to watch closely is because these housing starts and these permits are going up, that has uh, implications for construction spending. And that's un and going to really boost uh, flatbed um, capacity uh, really tightening up as more of these building materials are transported throughout the country. Right. Then as these houses get built, we're also going to see these new homes be filled with new appliances and all that good stuff. Right? Yeah, we talk about how there's kind of a cycle there where the beginning you have a flatbed carriers that are, are boosted by this and you have the uh, manufacturing and production that goes into housing, whether it be lumber or, or any type of the building uh, materials. And then once these homes get completed, you have to fill them with appliances, you have to fill them with things that make them an actual home rather than just a building. Right. Uh, and and that's where everybody else and the rest of the economy really um, benefits from this. Right, and, and really a, a bright spot in the economy, as you mentioned earlier. Not a lot going on in the other segments. Andrew, thank you so much for that insight welcome, today. Tony. And thank you so much for tuning in. That's going to do for the Shipper Update and this episode of Freight Waves Now. The fun doesn't stop here. We're always streaming around the clock on our Freight Waves TV app, so check us out on all your favorite streaming platforms. And if you're looking for a little bit more research, some of the stuff that Andrew does and his great team, check out the Passport program and get access to our world-class events. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode. Is the trade war back on? Trade war. Trade war, full-blown trade war. 15% tariffs on $112 billion worth of goods. Hours earlier, China announced tariffs of 5 and 10% on U.S. products.